How are you all this morning? Good morning, everybody. It's good you came to church today, I bet you. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I got the greatest surprise of my life today, this morning, when I woke up. I didn't really sleep, though. <laughs> well, when I put on the television, guess what I saw? I saw my town. I saw uh, on your TV, I could hear Ukrainian language, Ukrainian spe you know, speaking people for about the next one hour, a Ukrainian TV was on, speaking Ukrainian language, uh, having Ukrainian programs, just, I, I got confused, I, I thought I came to Australia. <laughs> I thought I lost my mind because I'd not slept for two days. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Ukrainian television right in the middle of Brisbane. And good God. Well, that really made me feel at home. <laughs> uh, so, well, really good to be here. Greetings from Ukraine, from Russia, and from all that area. Uh, greetings from my family. My wife was supposed to be here, but when she heard how many hours <laughs> we're going to fly, <laughs> she said, <laughs> husband, <laughs> I guess you have to go alone this time. <laughs> so she backed out. And, uh, <laughs> I have to do it alone, but I'm glad to be here. I'll bring back the report, and I'm sure by the time I come back with a good report, she will be eager, she will be keen to come here next time. Well, uh, it's, when I entered, it's like I've really known a lot of people in this church. At least I've been enjoying the tapes of Andrew and Brother Phil all year long in my house. I was in England last year and I got some of their tapes, some of their CDs. And when I came in, I told Pastor, Pastor Neil, I said, that is Andrew. He said, yes. <laughs> that is Phil, yes. <laughs> and uh, you have a great church here. I've got a great, young, vibrant leader here. Just <laughs> very good. And I want to appreciate um, our president, that's our apostle, uh, Pastor Neil. He is the one that is. He is the one to be blamed for my presence here. <laughs> so, thank you for bringing me down to Australia from Eastern Europe. Well, um, are you ready to hear the word of God this morning? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate your presence this morning. Spirit of the Lord, we ask that you will take full control of this meeting. Come and touch your people. Right now, we command for every force of darkness to be subject to the name of Jesus. We command every oppression, every sickness, every illness in the body and lives of the people, every work of the enemy represented in any form in the homes, at jobs, in the lives of people present here. Right now we charge you in the name of Jesus to bow. In Jesus' name we decree the presence and the reality of the kingdom of heaven in this place. Spirit of the Lord, fill this hall with your presence. Let your presence be tangibly felt. Let everybody feel your touch today. Minister to us. Speak to us. That we might not hear from man, but that we would distinctly hear your voice speaking to us, uplifting us, encouraging us, 
and leading us on to a victorious end. We thank you, Father, for the nice time we've already heard in your presence. We thank you for the greater things you're going to do this week. We thank you that your victory is here. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Have your way this morning. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to be talking today on the topic, What is your value of the prophet? What is your value of the prophet? What is your value of the prophet? You know, in many churches today, I mean, many big cities, especially when you go to capital cities like Brisbane, you find a lot of people running to and fro from churches and uh, going from one church to the other and uh, looking for the next man of God in town. And uh, many people are following signs and wonders. Many people are following the latest fight in Christianity and uh, the latest music and latest everything. But a lot of people are really not established. And that is a tragedy. When people are not established in the Lord, when people are not uh, uh, founded in the in the in a local church, it indicates indicates a a major problem. And uh, one of the things which is a major problem in the lives of these people is because they don't have a father, or maybe they don't have uh, a prophet in their lives. And that's why I'm going to be talk, talking today on the topic, what is your value of the prophet? Let's open our Bibles to Hosea, the, the, the book of Hosea that is uh, just after Daniel, before Joel, because some believers are believers of uh, Matthew and Mark and uh, Acts of the Apostles. But they don't want to know the little prophets, the minor prophets. So when you tell them, open your Bible to the book of Hosea, they say, is that in the Bible? New Testament or Old Testament? <laughs> Let's open our Bible to the book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 13. Hosea 12, verse 13. Anybody open it? Hosea 12, verse 13. Did you get it? Now it says, By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he was preserved. That is, Israel was preserved. Listen closely. By a prophet, the Lord, God, brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he was preserved. Now listen closely. Even God Almighty could not deliver his people from bondage, but by the prophet. Now we know God is almighty. God can do anything. Yet, for him to help his people, for him to deliver his people from bondage, he needed help. Can you imagine that? God in need of help? Yes. That is to say, you cannot just come up into the church or somewhere and say, I don't need you, pastor. I'm connected to God. You are mistaken. God needed a prophet. If God does, you sure do too. <laughs> By a prophet, the Lord brought, delivered Israel out of Egypt. That tells me something else. In the principles of God, this, in this verse you can see several ways of the Lord. And you see when we read the Bible... We don't just learn about God. We don't study about God. We learn His ways. We discover Him. 
We want to know how he thinks. We want to know the principles by which he acts. Now, this is one of the major principles that by which God operates. Now, he says, By a prophet, the Lord delivered Israel from Egypt. That is to say, deliverance is impossible without the prophet. Write that down. It will help you. <laughs> Write it down. You will really need to have a lot to write this time. If you are not used to writing, you might need to take the tape. Or you might actually end up regretting, why didn't I start writing on time? Because when this preacher preaches, you get new things from the scriptures. For by a prophet, Israel was delivered from Egypt. God needed a prophet. That's the number one truth you like to know for yourself. That is to say, you cannot do without a prophet. Secondly, by a prophet, God delivered Israel out of, it, out, out, out of Egypt. Egypt is a form of bondage. By a prophet, God delivered his people from bondage. Listen closely. Deliverance is impossible without a prophet. So I ask the question. What is your value for the prophet? The next question. Who is the prophet in your life? Anybody listening to me today? Many of us enjoy coming to church. Yeah, that is my pastor. Is due to say. That is Brother Neil. That is Brother Mark. Okay. Freelance believer. Freelance believer. God doesn't have a place for freelance believers, my brothers. Say it again. God does not have a place in this church for freelance believers. Are you in need of a deliverance? In need of a miracle? Are you in need of a touch from the Lord? You need a breakthrough in your family, in your business? You will continue to struggle until you make up your mind about your prophet. Because deliverance is impossible without the availability of the prophet in your life. What is that miracle you are expecting? What is that new point in life that you want the Lord to take you? What is that need that is overwhelming you? And you said, I've got the pastor prayed. I've got this person prayed. Nothing is happening. Because the pastor has not yet become a prophet in your mind and in your heart and in your life. You look funny now. <laughs> you will enjoy this. Keep on going with me on a journey. Deliverance is only possible through the prophet. You must come to a place whereby you say, Pastor, you are not just a pastor in my life. You are not just another Mark or another Neil or another Ashley. You are the man of God in my life. You are the saint man for me. You are the saint man for my life. I need you to be successful. You are my father. Listen closely. When you get to the point when you are able to come to your pastor... And just admit to him like that. Accept him wholeheartedly like that. Let me tell you something. The grace of God will start flowing. Without any hindrance to your life. You know why? Because he says, the anointing flows from the head of Aaron. Right to the bed. Then to the, to the, to the, to the, to the end of the garment. But if you are not joined to the body of Aaron, forget about it. So when you see believers that keep on going up and down, oh, that other preacher has just come to town. Let me go and see. <laughs> Shy display. Kids in other spines. Kids <laughs> in ladies. Breast, 
restless. Kids, kids, children. Spiritually speaking, though, the fact that you are having an adult outfit does not tell, does not say, really, that you are grown up spiritually. One of the factors that determines maturity in the body of Christ is <laughs> the ability to recognize the Father. Listen closely. God is so particular about fathers. Tell someone, fathers. Tell someone, fathers. Tell your neighbor, fathers. I see some people are really having problem with my accent because they have problem with obeying. The pastor has just said, good thoughts are good, but it's not action. God is not looking for good thoughts. God is not looking for agreement also. God is looking for action. I agree with him. So I said, I repeat, tell someone, fathers. Now it gets better. (laughs) Fathers, fathers, fathers. God believes in fathers. And for you to say you are mature in the Lord, you've got to know and to come to the concept of the fact that you need a father in your life. You've got to recognize a father. Now, let's go back to that scripture we just started, we started reading from. Hosea 12, 13. He says, By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. You got that point already. Deliverance is not possible without a prophet. All what I need as a man is hidden. Is deposited in the man of God the Lord has over me. God has placed on that man the anointing to break every yoke in my life. God has placed upon that man the power to, to, to agree with me in prayer and to get my breakthroughs come my way. God has placed upon him the word that I live, that I need for my living, for my personal life. God is placed in his mouth the revelation that I need to go from this stage to the next stage of my life. That is why I must recognize him and I must tell him, you are the man. I look to eat from your, from your mouth. I look for the word from your mouth because not by bread alone shall man live, but by every word that comes from the mouth. There is one man on the planet and that's most likely your pastor or your spiritual head or your apostle who is that person who is supposed to feed you by the word coming from his mouth. Anybody following me? And that word of the prophet guarantees your deliverance any time, any day, any hour. That's why he says, by a prophet, the Lord delivered Israel. Deliverance we always come through the hand of the prophet. You'll say, well, I have access to God myself. God also had access to Egypt himself. Israel also had an, an access to God themselves. But they couldn't bypass the prophet. Respect your pastor, man. He's not just another pastor that has come to go. No, he's your father. You can climb. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. It's like now we get we're getting along. <laughs> it's like we're getting along now. The second the second part of that verse is also crucial. 
Because it says, not just is their deliverance, the, not just did God deliver Israel out of Egypt by a prophet, he went ahead to say, and by their prophet, or by a prophet, he, that is Israel, was preserved. A wonderful truth. What a marvelous truth. And by the prophet, Israel was preserved. Not just deliverance through the prophet, but also preservation, sustenance is impossible without the prophet. Now, you could get some help, but not just to get the deliverance, you need the prophet, but to sustain your life, to maintain the, 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 the momentum of your success, of your victory, to maintain the protection of your, of your destiny. To maintain the blessings of your on your family, to maintain the growth in your business, to keep you preserved, man. All of us needs preservation. We need to be preserved. We need to be protected. We need to be covered. Everybody needs that. And he says, and Israel needed to be preserved. Israel needed needed to be preserved, and that preservation. That protection, that covering was offered, guaranteed by the prophet. So you need to come under the shadow of the prophet of your life, of your father, spiritually speaking. You've got to be under the covering of something, of somebody. You've got to be under the, under the, under the protection of someone. You've got to wake up in the morning and know that someone cares and prays for you. That you are covered. That no matter the, the amount of attacks that come against you, let all hell break through and it break loose against you. You know you are under the covering of the man of God. And you know that man is anointed. And you know the blessing of that guy is covering you. Nothing will touch you because you know you are an obedient child. You are a son in the house. You are a daughter in the house. Nothing will touch you. Nothing will overcome you. You have somebody that is stronger than you. That washes over you. That lifts you. That takes you by the hand. You are preserved and protected. Yeah. It's just like when I was a kid. I used to have an elderly brother. Elder brother. So when the guys used to beat me in this in, in the street. The next time I come with my brother. He was a huge big guy. And all the other guys like me were big, bigger than me. Now I say, okay, now, who are you? Who wants to talk there against me? Who wants to touch me? Try and touch me now. I was, I mean, I was so confident under the covering, under the umbrella of my brother, of my big brother, that I feared nobody. I knew my brother was around. And nobody dare confront me when my brother was there with me. The same thing spiritually. You need that government. That is why Israel needed to be preserved by the prophet. Now, why is God teaching us or talking to us about this today? Because God is so particular about fatherhood. Listen closely. One of the major reasons why Jesus had such a success in his ministry was because he understood this principle. Can you imagine? Jesus could not neglect the Father when he was here on earth. He could not, neg he could not neglect him. He was always recognizing the Father. You can check it out in uh, John 5, 19. He says, the son cannot do anything except those things he longs from the father. He sees the father those. He hears from the father. He makes himself liable to the father. He submitted himself, he subjected himself to the authority of the father. He said, you are children of your fathers. I am I do what I see my father do is substitute to the father. Fatherhood is so important. If Jesus 
had to walk under the umbrella of the Father, had to be subjected to the principle, this truth, you cannot do without it. You've got to get the Father in the kingdom. That is so rampant in the body of Christ today. And I tell you what, you show me a church that does not have this truth grande, the church will never grow beyond a certain level. Because people will keep on coming and going. They follow the latest anointed guy in town. But they are not established. Let me show you something. Establishment comes through fathers. Second, Second Chronicles. Second, Second Chronicles. Second, two Chronicles, yeah? Second Chronicles 20. You know that, but let's just check it and read it together. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Verse 20. The second part, the second part of that verse, Second Chronicles 20, 20. You, did you find it? It says, the second part of it, says, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe these prophets, and you shall what? Believe who? Prophets. Believe these prophets. God recognizes his prophets. God honors his prophets. God wants you to recognize his prophets. And God wants you to honor his prophets. Are you following me? It's not just enough. God could have stopped there by saying, well, believe in the Lord your God and that's all. He never need, he didn't need to mention his prophet at all. But he's showing us his ways of reasoning. His way of thinking. His principles of operations. This, listen closely, this is the way God operates. Now, tell someone beside you, this is the way God operates. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That is the way God operates. Now, are you following me? I want to tell you something that I'm thinking. Will you be able to swallow that? But you see, when I was in England with uh, Pastor Neil and uh, Pastor Ashley, I got to know that we are men of the same spirit. So it won't be a big deal. God does not give, bio, does not give birth to sons. Does not give birth. He doesn't give birth to, to, it doesn't give birth to, to sons. He doesn't born sons. God doesn't give birth also to fathers. God give, gives birth to children. God borns both children. He doesn't give birth to sons. So you cannot just say, I'm a son of God on my own accord. <laughs> Even Jesus was not born as a son. That will shock you. But well, let me prove it to you. Open your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. <laughs> Don't throw me the stone yet. <laughs> Don't stone me yet. Let me prove it out for you first. Isaiah chapter 9. <laughs> God does not build sons or fathers. Even Jesus was not born as a son. You know why? Because in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For, let everybody read, Isaiah 9, 6, 1, 2, 3. Let's read it together. For unto us a what? A what? Write that down. That will help you. God only 
bonds, but give birth to children, child, children, not sons. Even Jesus was not born as a son. He was born as a child. Okay, you don't know where I'm going, but I prove that to you. Listen closely. Listen closely. Now you need to really be attentive. Listen closely. Listen closely. Listen closely. Sons are not born. Sons are given. Read the next phrase in that verse. The next statement. Unto us a child is what? Born. And a son is what? Sons are not born. Sons are given. Children are born. So listen closely. That is to say, listen closely now. Because I feel confident of sharing this with you. Because I know you are in a good church. You will cope. You will, you will get it. <laughs> listen closely. <laughs> I used to be a boxer, you know. <laughs> I really want to get your attention. <laughs> now, God doesn't give birth to sons. He gives birth to children. Now, that is to say, we were all born by God. And that fact means we are all God's children. But none of us is born to, to, to the level of maturity of a son. Only sons can be led by the Spirit of God, can go on, them, on, the, on their own. Children need to be under the covering and under the guardian of their fathers. So as children of God, you need to have a father. Now, even Jesus was not born as a son. He was born as a child. And you know what happened? He needed to be under the submission of Joseph. That was why he needed a, an earthly father. Did you understand that? The reason he needed the earthly father was that he was not born as a son. He was born as a child. So, Joseph needed to take care of him until he grows to becoming a son. That is why he could, he could not start his ministry until he was able to be submitted to a father, work as a carpenter, train, get a profession, before he could become, when he became a son, he started his own ministry. He could not start his own ministry until he graduates to become a son. Listen closely. What God gave to the world to save the world was not a child. John 3.16 Say, what, is, what does John 3.16 say? Good! Clap for yourself. <laughs> Follow me. I'm not through yet. Oh, uh, no. Listen. <laughs> God did not give us a... Did not give us Jesus. Did not give birth to Jesus to save the world. He gave birth to a child. To a child that needed to recognize fatherhood. And to be under the tutorship, training of a father. Of the father. Before he could graduate to being a son. That's why when he became a son, he was qualified to becoming the gift that will save the world. So when he became a son, he was now given to the world. Not born to the world as a son, but when he graduated into being a son, he, he was liable, he was qualified to become the gift that will save the world.
What that means to you is that until you are under the tutorship of somebody to graduate you from childhood to his being a son, you cannot be fulfilled. You can never be given to the world to release your gift, to release your potential, to release the gifting of God that has been and the calling of God that's upon your life. You will never be fulfilled by your calling. You will never fulfill your purpose until somebody has mentored you and you have graduated from being a child to being a son. Then when God qualifies you as a son, he releases you into your ministry. You will become a gift to the world. Are you following me? Then if you read that verse further, you will notice that Jesus also graduated from being a son. You know what he became? In nine, in Isaiah 9, 6, if you read it further, he says, He shall be called also everlasting, what? Father. He did not just become a son. He went ahead. When he became the son, he kept, kept on submitting to the father, heavenly father now, in his, all his, through his ministry. And because he submitted to the heavenly father, God gave him the title of a father. Hello? The son of today is the father of tomorrow. You can never become a father until you've been... You can never be become a good father until you become a good son to somebody. Your sonship and your recognition of a father, of a prophet, will lead you now to becoming a father in your own right in the future. Let's open with me Galatians. Galatians. Are you still enjoying this? Or I should quit? Galatians chapter 4. Verses 1 and 2. Now I say that the, that the hair, as long as he is a child, let's, let everybody say, as long as he's a child. Let everybody say, child. As long as he is a child, does not differ at all from his slave. Though he is master of all, but he but is under guidance and stewards until the time appointed by the who? Father. Listen closely. You need a father to graduate from being a child to become a son. And you needed that graduation. You really need that graduation. Because if you don't mature from childhood to sonship, all your inheritance, you will never possess them. Because only sons are here, heir of righteousness. You never become heir of righteousness. You never inherit. You never inherit everything you have from God until you mature to become a son. Only son inherit in this kingdom. And sonship is not possible without the father. That is why verse 2 says, we just read it, verse 2 says, the time, until the time appointed by the who? By the father. So the future and the life and the destiny and the fulfillment of a child depends on who? On their fathers. So I ask the question again, brethren, who is your father? Who is your father? Number two question, what is your value of the prophet? That man you call your father, that man you call the man of God over your life, what is your value of him? If your value of this man, if your value of this man is just that of Mark, you will only get the blessings of Mark. But if your value of him is that of a father, the blessings of father start coming upon you. If your value of him is just that of Mark, you only get the blessings of Mark. 
But if your value of him is that of profit, you receive the reward of the profit. Same with this man. Will you please stand, but ask the name. Do you have a father? Thank you. You know, I don't know why God made me to preach this message here. But I always pray. Concerning any way I'm going to be speaking and what the Lord would like me to say. And only this morning I got to know that uh, Pastor Mark is just uh, taking over this church a year ago. And you know, when you have new pastors like that, some people want to be strong headed. I know we don't have the strong guys here. <laughs> we all understand. It will help somebody to listen. A couple of people that are having problems with your fingers and arthritis of the fingers of the, that are being healed right now. Just put, place your hand upon your, on yourself and just receive the touch of the living God and receive your healing. Now there is another person I'm saying. You have this problem with your skin. And it's actually coming up in your face, in your somewhere in the part of your face, and it's really causing embarrassment because you're using ointment and all that. But the skin is not smooth enough like do you like it to be. God is touching you. Place your hand on yourself for the healing that person. A sister, you have this problem with your menstruation, with your periods. Place your hand on yourself. God is healing you right now. Someone suffering from an infection in your blood. God is touching you right now. Another person, you cannot lift up your right shoulder, behind your, your right hand behind your head because of the shoulder problem you're having. If you place your hand upon that shoulder, that shoulder is being hit right now. In Jesus' name. If you suffer from acute headache, God is healing you now. Just receive your healing. Headache. He headache. God is healing you from the headache now. Now just let's remain in reverence in the presence of the Lord. And as you open your spirit, as you open your heart to the Lord and receiving his word, God is going to be just touching you. Whatever the need might be. It might be healing, it might be personal problems, it might be challenges in the home. Just, just keep a open spirit, a open heart, and God is going to continue touching you. Now. Amen. Now, did I say we should open the Gospel of Luke? Chapter 2, verse 20, verse 49. Verse 49. Did anybody get there? And he said to them, Why is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Listen closely. Jesus recognizes fatherhood. I must be about my father's business. There is another deep truth in this statement. Listen closely. Sons and children don't have their businesses. Actually, sons and children don't have their own anointing. How do I put it? So you cannot say, because I have a music industry, I mean, well, ministry. That is my ministry, Pastor. You are the pastor of the church. You are just the pastor, but I am the head of this ministry. No, it is the father's business. <laughs> you cannot say, I've got my own anointing. I'm in the church, yeah. I just come to the church. This is my church. But my own anointing is an evangelist. I have my own anointing. Well, the pastor is doing his own thing, and you, the church is doing his own thing. But I've got my own pe pe peculiar anointing. Not true. The truth is, God, maybe I, I, I'm afraid. Let me say it. I think you will swallow it. God does not anoint children. Is that heavy? He anoints fathers. Okay, okay. Let me prove it to you again. You want to open the Bible? Okay, go with me to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. <laughs> Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 34. <laughs> My father's business. That's what it's about. 
sons must recognize their fathers. And sons must know they are who they are because of fathers. Sons must know that they are not independent of their fathers. Children must know that they do not carry their own anointings. That the anointing is upon them because God has trusted that anointing to come upon them from their fathers. Sons, children must know that it is because it's under this ministry. That is why you are having such a success you are having. It is because you are under a father. That is why God is blessing your work the way he's blessing it. It is because you are under oh, this ministry, this man of God. It's because you have a father. That's why God is blessing your business the way he's blessing it. That's why he's blessing your ministry, your outreach the way he's blessing it. That's why he's blessing your songs and your music the way he's blessing it. Because you have a father. Listen, let's read it, that, that Deuteronomy chapter 34. Yeah, 34, 34, verse 9. Chapter 34, verse 9. 34, verse 9. 3, 4. 3, 4. You got it at last. Thank God. It's good that you are trying me out. In the conference, you will have less problems now. <laughs> verse 9. Verse 4, I'm sorry. Is it verse 9 I said? Yeah, verse 9. Verse 9. Are you there? Yes. Now, Joshua, the son, everybody say son. Yes. <laughs> the son of man was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Listen closely. The anointing upon the life of Joshua was not his. Write that down. He was a son to Moses. In another place, he was a servant to Moses. But that means the same thing. He was subject to Moses. The anointing on Joshua's life was not Joshua's. And the reason God was blessing the works of Joshua was not because he was Joshua, big guy. No, because of the anointing upon him. And tell me what? Guess how the anointing came upon him? Because Moses had laid his hands upon him. That is the key to the anointing he carried. And that's why Israel heeded him and obeyed everything that was commanded. So if you are having some success in your ministry, if you are having some breakthrough, you are selling your cities, you are uh, having 200 people give their lives overseas. 10 people, 20 people giving their lives under your ministry. Then you come back to the church and say, Pastor, you have just 10, two people giving their lives on Sunday mornings. I, when I go overseas, I see hundreds giving their lives. Uh, well, you know, when I lay eyes, people fall out with the anointing, man. I mean, I have the anointing just the same way you do. Listen, you don't have anything. <laughs> what you see functioning through you, operating through you, that is the Father's anointing, brother. It is my Father's business. Sons, children don't have their businesses. It is their Father's business. Recognize that the blessing you have is because you have a Father. Recognize that the anointing, the grace that the Lord has trusted you with is because you have the Father. Be submitted and be joined together. That oil, as long as you are joined together, as long as you are fit to the Father, we keep on flowing from the head of Aaron right to his day, to his son, and to the end of his life. <laughs> Amen. You want to look at the life of Elisha? He had double portion. He had more anointing than Elijah. Than Elijah. But guess what? It was not his anointing. He did more than Elijah did. Than Elijah did. But it was not his anointing. It was two times more. But yet, it was still Elijah's anointing. God does not anoint children. He anoints the fathers. Then the fathers pass the blessing down to the children. Who is your father? 
Do you have the Father? What is your value of the prophet? Listen closely. By the prophet, God delivered Israel from Israel and from Egypt. And by the prophet, he preserved him. God preserved Israel. By the prophet, who is the prophet in your life? Let's stand up. Some of you might need to repent before your pastors. Some of you might need to repent before your apostles. Some of you might really get to sit down before God and say, God, show me this thing. I'm confused. We don't need freelance believers in the church that run after the latest fad in town, that runs from church to church, that looks for the next man on TV, the next man on the street. We need children in the house that recognize their fathers. We need sons that are obedient to their, cho- to their fathers. We need children that will graduate to sonship and sons that will graduate to father. Give God a hand.